This is Charter Local Edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz, and we are joined today by Arlen Mikoff. He is the majority leader in the Michigan State Senate. And suffice it to say, sometimes elections don't go as planned, and Prop 1 was an example of one such election. Uh, the voters turned against it, only offering 20% support. What do you make, sir, of the voters' decision? How do you analyze it? Well, I think we heard from a, a vast range of folks. Some said no taxes. There certainly was an element sure. of that. Some said, I don't like the fact that you put more stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Another group said, if it was only for roads, I think I could right. pay more. Another group that basically said, it's so confusing, I'm just going to vote. Could it also be that what the voters are saying is, we're a little cynical about what's happening in Lansing. We're a little skeptical. So it wasn't even so much this plan, but just there was a sense that maybe Lansing's house is not in order. Uh, I mean, there should, I'm sure there's probably some right. of that. There's skepticism around any time you're in public service. Sure. People want to believe the worst, right? and we're trying to do our best. Let's talk about what the voters were saying, because I was fascinated in looking at this issue. The same polls which indicated that voters were going to turn against Prop 1 also said, by the same margin, that they would be interested in a sales tax increase that was just that. Yeah. Maybe take it from 6 to 7% sales tax and all the money would go to roads, nothing else, no complications. What do you think about that and that view that the voters have expressed? And I also think we heard from a group that said, you Lansing, you guys fix this. It's your problem to fix. Mm. And we got criticized for actually bringing it to the ballot. Huh. Uh, so I, but most folks, we needed to educate them and help them understand that any time we change the sales tax up, right. the Constitution says we must go to the voters. So, uh, and so we heard um, right. conflicting things all the way around. Obviously, people understand the roads are the top priority. Right. We heard that loud and clear. But what we, ha what w nobody's really been able to circle around is how do we pay for it? Right. A and it's interesting you say that because look, at a certain level, is Michigan saying, this is what we want. We get what we pay for. And if we have potholes, if we have roads in disrepair, we had our chance, and so could it be you got to give the voters what they pay for? Well, I, I, I would agree with part of that because we've also heard from an equal number or more from folks saying you have a lot of money in Lansing. Figure out how to reprioritize but, but, the money that you have. But, but do you though? I mean, look, it's easy to say, oh, you I'm, just I'm passed. Say, I'm yeah. saying you're right. It, it's easy to say that we have 54 billion exactly dollar budget, right, right? right? But really, after you whittle it down and after your tax money comes back from the federal government right. and the matching stuff, we have about. $9 billion. Like earmarks, which, for example. Or, or not, not earmarks, but, but it's matching funds so right. that your tax money is used appropriately. And then you take corrections off of the top right. of that. You're down to about $7 billion. And now when you give people that pie and say, well, this is what we have. Tell me whom you'd like me to take it from. And you get the shrugs and the cricket noise in the room, right? Same poll that I was looking at said exactly what you described. Oh, yes, find money elsewhere. But do you want to cut social services? 80% no. Do you want to cut schools? 85% no. Right. So it's almost a schizophrenia, not unique to Michigan, of course. You know, it, it, it's a common story. But I do want to get back to the sales tax issue because, again, it does appear that if Prop 1 had been just six to seven percent all money to roads it may have gone differently as the senate goes back the house has uh, adopted its plan you'll see what happens when the senate comes back would the senate look at just the simplest formula six to seven percent let's go back to the voters it, it could be something like that but before proposal was there they did not support the, they meaning the, the, the folks that we understood i understand said, so in in light of proposal one they may they may Okay, but I think that our caucus also believes that government has the ability to right size and do some more things. And my caucus is looking at how do we do that? How do we redirect the revenue we already have? And what's a sustainable revenue source going forward? What about a plan that the Senate has considered, which would actually phase in a fuel tax increase? So we're not looking at sales taxes. We're looking at the fuel taxes because, look, you know as well as anyone. It's a user fee. A user fee. You know as well as anyone that there's a blessing and a curse with hybrids and with electric cars, 
the blessing is maybe not as many you know pollutants coming out. The curse is people aren't using as much gas, which means you're not collecting as much fuel tax. Right, because our sales tax, or excuse me, our fuel tax is flat. It's per gallon. Right. And many have said, and I agree, if we'd have added just the inflation factor 17 mm. years ago, mm. we'd have just short of a billion dollars more to spend on roads. So anything we do uh, involves uh, fuel tax. I believe we have to put in the inflation factor going forward so that we don't come back to this problem. Would you need to go to the voters on that issue? No, we would not. Do you think there's an appetite to adopt that approach? I think uh, particularly the inflation factor will be, and I, you've seen it in the House plan, and I believe you'll right. see that in the Senate plan as well. We also know, and this is not unique to Michigan, many countries have adopted this in Europe, other states are looking at it, this notion of a, a it's a vehicle charge by distance, that somehow there would be uh, some type of device put in the car to track how many miles you drive. Now, there are lots of different scenarios behind that. There are privacy concerns, whatever it may be. But given that, we are using less fuel because we have more fuel-efficient cars. Should it be that we look at actual miles driven? Because that ultimately, it's how long you're in the car, how much road use you are putting on our roads that is impacting the need for uh, more repairs. I, I would consider something like that, but not probably not right now. I don't think we're right there. I think your, your mm. first comments about privacy concerns and how would we get there and how would it work, it, that is a little bit immature yet. It's not That's quite fair. here to do, but I think whatever we're gonna do now can maybe help us lead us to that and sometime in the future. Uh, because if you're gonna, if you actually are saying it's the ultimate user fee, it is and it isn't because then folks who are not traveling roads who benefit from roads yeah, right. aren't paying anything. And one could also argue that maybe it's a little aggressive because look, if you live farther out from an urban center for housing prices, you know, why should one be penalized just because they don't have enough money yeah. to and live? There, and there's a segment of our economy that travels many states. Right. So how do you categorize the miles in other states that aren't doing the same thing that, that we could be doing? So there, there's some inherent difficulties, but I think it's probably not quite here yet. Let's talk about a few other states, especially nearby Ohio, Illinois. They have toll roads. That's one option to consider. There are lots of complications behind that, federal roads, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But should Michigan look at toll roads, be it public or private public? I mean, there could be a public-private partnership there um, that could benefit. You, the Michigan wouldn't have to spend all the money to put the roads in place, but could benefit from uh, their creation. If we had toll road assets like Ohio and Indiana that we could monetize right. and turn into something, that'd be great. But we don't have any right now. Right, right? but is it if something? We, if we would do it in the future, your, your comments about the Constitution, right now we cannot do it on existing roads because you've already paid for them. This would have to be a new road or new, mile, new lanes. Okay. okay. And if it's, they're very expensive to build. I know. Yeah, so I know you, we don't have the money to fix our roads now. So if you're going to pour it all into one thing and then the tolls that are collected on there are generally used to upkeep that road only. They don't throw off a lot more funds to help the other roads. So is it possible? Yeah, I'm sure. Would you, would you think about a, an additional lane from 94 from Detroit to Chicago? Sure. Maybe you do that as a fast pass thing. But if someone builds it a public private partnership, the, the tolls that go for that go for maintaining that road, not necessarily adding to the I transportation fund in Michigan. Where's the governor in this conversation? Uh, the governor is hopeful that we'll find a, a, a very functional solution that goes forward. And, and between uh, the House and the Senate, where are you all together? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that the House sent over that we, that we really like, and there's some ideas my caucus members have that we're going to add to that, and hopefully we'll come up with a plan that uh, most people can agree. His name is Arlen Mikoff. He is the Senate a Majority Leader in the Michigan State Senate. My name is Brad Palmer. So glad you joined us today on Charter Local Edition.